So, I did not expect to be lucky enough to be able to do another video on a character from this Hulk update. I was intent on not spending crystals to get Amadeus Cho or She-Hulk's new uniforms. I wasn't going to buy the Danger Room package for Abomination. And I wasn't going to spend money to get um, Red She-Hulk, though we do get her for free. But I was lucky enough to get 10 Abomination bios from the Vibranium chest from Danger Room this week. And so I decided... Well, I decided to take him to tier 2, uh, just like you're seeing here. But it wasn't an instant decision. I, I was still thinking about it and I was thinking, yes, I know I have 4 Mega Tier 2 <laughs> tickets now from the past um, event quests and the Shadowland uh, first rewards, first clear rewards. But, you know, in my head, it's like you're, you're, you're never sure if Netmarble will just stop giving us these these mega tier 2 tickets eventually, right? So um, I decided in the end that if Netmarble would give us a mega tier 2 ticket event, I will tier 2 Abomination. And lo and behold, we have tier 2 Abomination on my account. Didn't think I would get him for sure. And yeah, that's also a reminder that we have uh, an event quest with a mega tier 2 ticket. Uh, by the time this video is out, you should probably have a hundred when you collect today's. I, I don't know when this video comes out. My schedule is pretty hectic right now. I just want to get this out now. So now that I have a tier 2 abomination on my roster, that kind of begs the question, what the hell do I do with him? Right? So there were two answers that came to mind when I thought of that. The first of which was to see how he buffs the Hulk. Because as we all might know at this point, his tier 2 passive seems geared to buff Hulk specifically. Now an argument might be made for Amadeus Cho's viability in other content, but for the most part I think it was for Hulk specifically. I don't see anyone using She-Hulk to clear high stages of world boss. Uh, but yeah, so I want to see how my performance with tier 3 Hulk improves with Abomination. And the second thing was, well, I think the more predictable thing, but to take him into some content. So I kind of skipped the building stages. I gave him an Overdrive ISO 8 set with uh, six star ISOs, all slots filled. And I gave him a very simple crit damage, ignore dodge, 120 proc. It's not gonna kill world bosses at really high stages, but I think it'll get the job done, especially when you look at his stats. Now he, has 35% crit rate, but that's because on his 4 skill, he gets 40% crit rate. And I wanted to be able to capitalize on that. So his crit damage is almost maxed out. His ignore defense is capped out. I use his 4th gear option to fill up that ignore defense. And he has the cooldown duration maxed out as well. So he seems like he's ready to be taken into some content. So basically, we'll be looking to answer the two questions that I posed regarding Abomination's role on my roster. And I think by answering those questions, we'll also have a clearer perspective on how much value Abomination provides as a Danger Room character. Because you do need to spend crystals to acquire him unless you're incredibly lucky that, like I am and are willing to use a Mega Rank Up ticket and a Mega Tier 2 ticket to get him to Tier 2, right? He's a very expensive investment. and Given how lucky I am to get him and to have the resources to spend on building him, I want to be able to showcase the value that you get, right? And kind of compare him to other Danger Room characters. So yeah, let's get into some content. So first, I took Hulk against Stage 30 Thanos. Now, I did mention that I tried to do that for Hulk in my Hulk video previously. And for those who didn't watch it, though you definitely should, I wasn't able to clear stage 30 with Hulk, you just couldn't do it. The team that I was running at the time was She-Hulk, Shuri, and Hulk. And I replaced Shuri with Abomination and I wanted to see how you fared. I'm kind of skipping over a lot of the a lot of the not important details of the match because uh, I just want to I just want to say the message that I want to get through is that he was able to clear the stage with Abomination. Now. Does that mean Abomination gives him such a big boost that he can clear 5 stages higher? I don't think it's a massive boost because 
for for my account anyway, stage 30 is still quite low. Stage 25 was just really low. So maybe maybe health needed that chain hit damage just to um, get past those upper stages. But yeah, as you can see, I'm just kind of compiling clips of times that the chain hit damage that Abomination would provide might take effect. And you can see that damage is quite substantial. I'm just surprised that I was able to clear it because I had a lot of difficulty um, when I tried it without Abomination. Right? And even now, I think I was just barely able to clear it. You can see over there, 13, 12. 11 seconds, 11 seconds. So, does he make Hulk better? I think so, but I wouldn't say he makes him that much better that you need to have him to make Hulk viable. So with the Hulk test done, I took Abomination into some content in the form of Proxima World Boss. It took me a while to kind of figure out how he played, and I tried to record the footage while speaking over it but I think that was kind of messing up my gameplay so we're doing this instead where I talk over the gameplay that I had already played because as you'll see from these next couple of seconds I had a couple of, a couple of fails uh, <laughs> yeah because the thing about him is that if he gets caught in one of Proxima's bigger attacks like the purple spears or even just the normal the normal red spears in the second stage yeah he dies and if Proxima gets her frenzy buff off too many times uh, Abomination can't do the stage and I don't want to just post footage of me failing because I want people to think I'm a good player too even though I may not be one but that's beyond the point I want to showcase the full potential that Abomination has so I want to showcase a run in all its glory, where Abomination is able to clear Proxima. And so, here's the clear that I promised. This is going to be gameplay of me clearing stage 60 Proxima, the full run through, and I'm just going to commentate over it, basically. So, things that I have to note. Stage 60 is the barometer by which I test a lot of the high-end tier 3 characters. So it's really impressive that Abomination was able to clear this highest stage at level 60. The thing though is that he's still a level 60 character which is why I had to concentrate immensely while playing with him because he, I, like I mentioned earlier, I died a couple of times and I want to mention things that you must note in order to in order to keep up his survivability, right? So what are things that will help him survive? He has a, sh a short iframe on the third skill Immunity on the 4th skill and an iframe on the 5th skill, a long iframe. So what I tried to do is I tried to get the accumulation on the 3rd, almost immediately cancel into the 4th skill, try to let the 4th skill play out to get more hits in, and then go into the 5th skill and try to stay in the 5th skill for the longest time in order to keep yourself protected. The thing about Abomination is he also has a heal, so if you get any chip damage in, you're fine. But with Proxima, there's a lot of instances where if you get hit once, you're kind of dead, right? So you don't want it to get hit at all for the most part. Um, Proxima throws around all these spears a lot, and you want to avoid those. And like I mentioned earlier, Abomination has incredibly slow movement speed. So whenever the purple spears come out, you want to switch to another character because he cannot run away from them fast enough and he will die. Which is sad, but those are about the negatives. I wouldn't even call it negatives. There's just characters just find it hard to survive sometimes. But what's really impressive about Abomination is his damage is quite good. I would say um, I wasn't sure if four or five ended up being his more damaging skill. If I had to guess, I think it's five because of the all defense down. Though I found that it was all right to proc on either 4 or 5, which is very useful when, when having a rotation for a character, having it very easy to proc on another skill, right? Even his third skill actually did some decent damage uh, when when I accidentally proc'd on it. Um, 
the, I think the reason why he does so well, again, is because of the all defense down. So you could use another leadership to maybe amplify his all defense down. Maybe someone like White Fox or or Dr. Voodoo. But he does quite well in this stage. Like if you see here, he's, uh, he's got a little more than two minutes and he's already on the fourth bar. Usually when I'm judging a character's ability to clear this stage, um, by the by the two minute mark, they have to be at six bars. So he's doing double the time basically. Um, Proxima does make it really difficult though by activating the purple spears constantly because not only does it force me to switch to another character, taking off like eight seconds from Abomination's time, but it also gives her the frenzy buff which prevents uh, the all defense downs effect from applying it also reduces the damage that she takes and so it basically just makes our run longer right this wasn't a problem before when you had the strikers constantly cc'ing the boss but now it's an important consideration to make given that very hard to maintain the cc forever which is again one of the reasons why i had trouble making abomination last and survive in previous stages but um yeah so again, I just want to make clear the rotation that I'm going with. Third skill, not just for the accumulation, but for the super armor. Because if you don't have the super armor, you get guard broken with your fourth skill. Right? So third skill, cancel into the fourth skill. I try to let that play out, but you can opt not to if you want. Just hit it to get the buff. And then fifth skill for the, for the all events down. I think if I were to advise players to prop on a skill, it would be the fifth skill mainly. It does do quite good damage and if you, it has 7 seconds of 60% all defense down which is massive. So yeah, I'm really close to clearing this stage. You can see almost there. So there you go, Abomination gets the clear on stage 60 Proxima. And I think Abomination is quite a beast when it comes to Proxima world boss. His all defense down is just so high and can still be amplified by leaderships like Voodoo's or White Foxes. So he can go even higher. I just wanted to test him with his uh, base kit per se, just to see how well he does uh, on his own. So what are my thoughts on Abomination as a character? I think he's a very good character. Definitely on the higher end of a lot of recently released characters. But that kind of begs the question, is he good enough a character to be worth the 4,500 crystals that you have to invest into the Danger Room pack in order to get him? I don't know about that. Is 4,500 crystals worth it for a character who can do one, maybe two world bosses? I, I don't know. Because if you look at a character like Professor X, who also has a tier 3, which Abomination doesn't have, and I don't think Abomination will ever get one. Professor X isn't just good for one world boss. His raw damage is quite good as well. So he can do Ebony, he can do Thanos, and not just that, he's the top scorer right now for ABX, I believe. It's either him or Cable, I'm not sure, but he's up there. And he's also one of the fastest clearers for GBR. Galactus as well. I don't think Abomination will reach those heights, right? So you might argue that Professor X is the better 4,500 character to invest in. Abomination reminds me a lot of another Danger Room character that I purchased when she came out earlier, and that's Negasonic. Negasonic also has 60% all defense down on her kit, which is a big reason why I purchased her at the time, but I haven't really used her since. As Maybe as a striker, I've used her a couple more times, especially given the new striker changes where the all defense down from strikers can't stack, so I need someone with a high all defense down contribution. But I don't use her to clear Cull Obsidian anymore. I may have used her a couple of times when I first got her, but now she doesn't even compare to a lot of the tier 3's that come out. And my worry is that with Abomination, that will be true later on down the road. 
Do I regret investing the 4,500 crystals into Negasonic? Maybe a little. I feel like I'd have much better use for those 4,500 crystals now. Well, a little less than 4,500. 4,500 minus 1,250 that you get back. But you get what I mean, though. Like, I could, I could be purchasing the, the Richard Ryder Deluxe Pack now. I think if you are considering investing the 4,500 crystals to get Abomination, you get a pretty good character. Pretty good for a one world boss, and if you build him up well, can go quite high, I would imagine. I think maybe his ceiling might be around 80. I don't know, that's just my thought. I'm not willing to build him enough to get to that stage, so yeah. If that prospect is worth it to you, then by all means, do purchase Abomination. But for me, personally, I don't think that's worth it. Knowing what I know now, I definitely would not purchase Abomination for 4,500 crystals. Because for that amount of crystals, I could get four uniforms that would transform other characters to be able to do more content. That's just the way I see it. I think there's more valuable ways to spend crystals. But again, I was incredibly lucky to be able to pull him from the Danger Room pack and I was incredibly lucky that that coincided with Netmarble being willing to give away so many Mega Tier 2 tickets. So I just had to test him and I for one am happy to have him on my roster and I'm so glad that I didn't have to spend crystals. So to conclude, I don't think the 4,500 crystals would be worth it to me because I think it can be spent in many many better ways. But if it's worth it to you, a 60% all defense on character, you can't really go that bad with it. He's a very good character, a lot of self-healing, a lot of great buffs that he can give himself. So yeah, it's up to what you want from your account as well. So I hope this look into Abomination was insightful in helping anyone watching this decide whether or not to purchase the Danger Room pack. Should I do more tests on Abomination? Should I build him up better, maybe give him a fully awakened ISO 8 set? Uh, give him a higher damage proc, take him to level 70. I don't know if anyone out there would be interested in seeing that, but just feel free to leave a comment or something if, if that's the type of content you want to see. I for one will probably just leave Abomination at level 60 just the way he is if no one asks me to make more content on him. But yeah, I hope that those watching are able to learn something from this video. And once again, thank you so much for watching.